All right. So let's put negative two in there, and uh, and some of you made a mistake that I, I wanted you to make because I want you to remember that that you might make a mistake, you might be susceptible to that. So if we put in, so my first suggestion to make sure that you always uh, this correctly would be to remove the x and put it in its place in parentheses uh, because a set of parentheses basically. It does the job exactly what x does, but it seems to uh, make a few more mistakes. So when I put parentheses there, I make sure that the number goes exactly in the place of x. Okay? This x basically is what this parentheses looks like. It's just an open space. It's just a hole. It's just waiting for something to be put there. So I put negative 2 in there. This typically goes just fine. So you do 3. What's negative 5 times negative 2? It's positive 10, negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Okay, what does it what does it mean when I square something? Times it by itself twice. What is it? What is the thing that we're supposed to multiply by itself twice? Negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 four. is positive 4. That's the mistake that usually gets made. Uh, people will get negative. It's negative 2 times itself, so we should get a positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is 8. Negative 8. So it should give us 5. All right, so let's plot that point. Negative 2, positive 5, 4 over y. So one of the main things I'm trying to get you to see here before we spend a lot of time graphing lines is not all graphs are lines. Does it look like if I were to connect these points, I could make a straight line out of it? Mm -hmm. It does? No. Mm -hmm. Even here, that's pretty pretty steep, and, and the line from there to there would not be as steep. This can't be on the same line. So if we were to connect them, they wouldn't be a line. They would be, what would you, how would you describe that shape? Mm -hmm. Really, we, oh, we've got zero, we've also got zero, three. Curve. Yeah, curve. It, the reality is you, you can't just make a straight shot between any two points that you plot. If I were to go straight between those two points, I would have missed this one. So if you want to make it more natural, we try and make it a nice, smooth curve. Okay. So if I were to connect these points, at least that much of it looks like a curve like that way. If I were to plot lots more points, if I were to plot this point, and this point, and this one, 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 plot all these points, all those points together would start to mush together and make this curvy shape. Not an angle kind of shape, but a curvy shape. Well, what do you think it's going to look like over here? Is it going to keep curving up like that? Do you think it's going to come back down? Do you think it's going to flatten out? Down. He's going to go way up there and come down. down. Okay, well, you might be right, you might be wrong. How can we find out for sure? Keep graphing. With point graphing point. some points. Let's do another point. Let's negative do three. negative three. Yeah, let's put a negative three and see what comes out. Right? So here's your opportunity to did you make that mistake before with the squaring of a negative number. And again, I would really highly suggest that you write it down. Write down. Every step, write down every step that you do until it is, you're much more practiced and fluid at it. Don't start trying to skip steps now early on. Uh, wait until later after you've done it a bunch of times. Take out those x's, put parentheses inside the parentheses, put negative 3.
guess about this part, I want to I want to change it a little bit because I think my, my best guess is a little off. I think it comes up a little more and then it comes back down. Yeah, probably. It goes through. That's that's gonna be my guess. I think that's what it is. <coughs> so hopefully lesson learned not all graphs are So now we've kind of agreed that if we get y by itself, it certainly makes this function much easier to use. We can put something in for x, and it's much easier to figure out what y. So let's take both of these and get y by themselves. Okay, so y by itself in this equation is over there. Um, we can Uh, 
both sides by five. Remember to multiple to divide both sides by five, which means divide this by five, divide that by five. Y equals two <laughs> minus four times x. And y is by itself. How about this one? Some of you y by itself. And this one falls. All right, Lily. Then divide by negative 3. So negative 1 divided by negative 3 is positive 1 thirds, 1 third, and yes. Negative 2 divided by negative 3 is positive 2 thirds. So, Here's where we are. We've kind of, remember we've, we've already talked about lines, we've talked about slope intercept form, we've talked about y intercept, we've talked about slope, we've talked about these things quite a bit. But um, we've come back around to it again because all the stuff that we've gathered, like what a function is and how a function works and what a solution to an equation is, uh, what a graph is specifically, um, all of those things help us out a lot more than we might have. So um, I've been I try to get my, my algebra two and to a little bit lesser extent my calculus students to remember how important it is to understand what a function is. And even if you have no idea what the graph is supposed to look like, if you want to graph it, we just need to find some solutions, which means we just need to plug in some x's, find some y's, find some solutions to those equations. Just use the function, uh, put input and get output. Okay. So Let's do that now. Let's get a few solutions and graph this graph. So it's up to you. You put whatever you want in for x. You want to put a 1 in there? You have 0 instead of 1. Okay, 0. Put a 0 in there. 0 times negative 4 fifths is 0, leaving just 2. That was a nice choice. That was very easy to do. So it's nice to pick numbers for x that turn out to well, not leave us with a fraction. We'd like to pick numbers to plug in for x that aren't fractions, but leave us with not with fractions. But we can put anything we want. Okay. From 3 and then um, negative 2 over 5. You're going to put 3 in there? I don't know if I did that right. Okay. Well, let's find out. We put in 3. So you gotta do a little more work here. Four fifths times three over one. Okay, we multiply fractions, multiply straight across. Two minus uh, 12 fifths. So now we need common denominator. What's our denominator gonna be? 10. 10, yeah. This is five. Right. This is already five, and this would be easy to multiply to get five. Multiply by five, multiply by five. 10 fifths. Minus 12 fifths, and what's 10 fifths minus 12 fifths? Negative 2 over 5. So we put in 3, negative 2 over 5 is our output. Good. We got another point. So this is a great point. It's perfectly good. It's just that when we go to graph negative 2 fifths, it's going to be a little bit some guesswork. We kind of got to have a good guess for where 2 fifths is. Derek? Put five in there. Let's change the three to the five. Let's see what happens. Two minus four fifths times five. We'll do five over one. When we multiply fractions, we can cross cancel like that. Five divided by five is one. 
Now we have 4 times 1 over 1 times 1, which just leaves us with minus 4. And 2 minus 4 is 2. Put in a 5 and we get negative 2. That's nice because it canceled out the denominator and we didn't have to worry about getting common denominators. You do 10, because 10 will do that too. 10 will cancel out that denominator. 2 minus uh, 4 fifths times 10 over 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So we have 4 times 2 over 1 times 1. That's 8. So 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So we put in 10 and negative 6. All right, we've got four points. That's pretty good. So let's, let's plot those four points. So 0, 2, 1, 2. That one is really easy because we just plug 0 in there and that term goes away and then it's left with 2. So I would call this our line set. 3 and negative 2 fifths. So negative 2 fifths is uh, just a little bit short of negative 1 half. So I'll put it right there. 5, negative 2, 10, Six, seven, ten, six. Try to. So I, I plot, plotted four points somewhat randomly. You know, I've allowed you to pick any x you wanted, and it looks like these four lines or four points are on a line, right? Looks like I draw a straight line through them. Um, and Probably this is not some curvy thing going through these four points that look like they're in a straight line. We haven't chosen them randomly. They just so nicely lay on a line. So it turns out that if we kept plotting points, we would just keep getting points on this line that goes through all of those. Um, so just looking at this equation, just looking at this equation, uh, how can I? be sure, how do I know that when I graph it, the graph will be a line? You just point guns at it. Well, there's no square of it. Yeah, there's no square, there's no cube, there's no fifth power. The powers of x and y What is the power of x in that equation? One, and the power of y is one. So if your x's and your y's are all to the first power, then you know that it's going to be a line when you graph it. So we call it a linear equation, a linear function, because when you graph it, it'll be a line. And those are the, the ones that we're going to concentrate on. <laughs> Let's do a couple more. And What I'm hoping now is um, that not only will we be able to look at these linear equations and be able to pull out things like oh, the y-intercept and the slope, but we'll understand better why those things can be done, why I can just pull those numbers out, and why those numbers control the line in that way. So, graph and we say, oh, that 3, that's the y-intercept. But we just figure it out, let's say over here in, in this example, that that's just an easy point to find because if I plug in 0 for x, that thing with the x in it, that x becomes 0, 0 times 5 thirds is 0, and we're just left with 3. So you plug in 0, and you must just get left with that constant number, whatever that number happens to be. So Go a freebie, 0, 3 is an easy point to plot. 
And then we found out that it's really nice and convenient. If we plug in something for x, we cancel out the denominator. So if we move to the right, if we look at the positive numbers, what's the, the first number that will cancel out that denominator? 6. No, nothing smaller than 6. <coughs> So if I plug in a 3, I'll get 5 thirds times 3 all the way. That's 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we have 5, 1, 3, 8. Let's make a little table here. Put in 0, get out 3. Put in 3, it cancels the denominator. And we just add that much to 3, and we get 8 over here. We're just adding 5. Adding 5 to 3, or yeah, adding 5 to 3. So we start at 3, we add, add 5 to that. 2, 3, 4, 5. And that happens when we put it in x. So if we go over to x is 3, then we add on a 5. So that's starting y position at 3. What's the next number that will? 6 will do that. 6 will cancel that. But 6. Instead of 3, well, 6 cancels with 3 as well, only 6 divided by 3 is 2 instead of 1. So we have 5 times 2 is 10. So we're adding on another 5. So we've got 3, add on another 5, add on another 5, up 5, and another 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, go over 2x is 6. What about in the negative direction? Is there a negative number we can plug in that we can't solve the denominator? Negative 3. But because it's a negative, when we go and multiply it by 5 thirds, we'll get a negative number. So we'll move down. We'll subtract something off of 3. So Negative 3 divides with 3 gives us negative 1, so 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So we'll subtract 5 from 3. We'll move down 5 from 3, and we'll get negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that happens when we put in an x at negative 3. Huh? It is a straight line. We knew it was going to be a straight line because x and y are both to the first power. And that guarantees that we're going to have a straight line. If we keep plotting points, all we're going to wind up doing, if we keep choosing these multiples of 3, is we're going to keep going either up 5 into the right 3, up 5 into the right 3, up 5 into the right 3, or we're going to go down 5 into the left 3. We find points that way. And if we plot points in between, now we're just going to wind up landing on this line. So using that information, using that we can we can plug in zero for x and we just get this number out, that's an easy one. And then we're gonna just move down this much and to the right this much to find another point. Because we're using slope intercept for the part of the y-intercept and the slope. So we just do that real quick. I'm sure it won't take too long. Once you have your notes, just write down y plan intercept x. Use that sh little shortcut. You plot your y-intercept, you plot your slope, and draw your line between those two points. You only need to find two points if you know it's going to be a line. <laughs>